Poor hygiene at calving or in the calf shed always has an adverse effect on calf health and calf performance. In this film, part of Dairy Co's calf management series, we'll be looking at how to maintain optimum hygiene in the calf shed. In other films in this series, we cover maximising the immunity transferred from colostrum to newborn calves. But this isn't the only way to protect calves from infection. Successful calf rearing also requires attention to hygiene throughout the entire system to ensure that calves aren't exposed to pathogens. I'm joined now by Nicola from Dairy Co. Hi Nicola, um, can you tell me why is a clean environment so important for calves? A productive calf is a profitable calf. It can convert as much of the energy it gets from its food into growing at the optimal rate. Infections such as joint ill, navel ill or scours in the first few weeks of life result in treatment costs reduced feed efficiency and poor growth. It also puts them at risk of respiratory disease later on. If efficient hygiene practices are put in place, these losses can be avoided and the calf rearing system can be efficient and cost effective. This short film has been made for farmers and farm workers who want to understand more about the role of hygiene in the calf rearing system so they can ensure maximum calf productivity and comfort. We're going to cover how staff hygiene affects calves, management practice within the calving pen, the benefits of navel dipping, how to avoid infections when tagging and dehorning, hygiene when feeding, and finally, aspects of housing which influence hygiene. Hygiene should be a priority before you even enter the calf housing. Manure from adult cows is a disease risk to your calves. Clean clothes, boots and gloves are all essential for the calf rearer. It's a good idea to wear clean clothing that you save specifically for calf feeding to avoid transferring bacteria from other activities on the farm. You should have a boot dipping station with fresh disinfectant at the correct concentration at the entry of the calf housing. Remember that disinfectant cannot penetrate dirt or manure on your boots. You must ensure your boots are scrupulously clean before immersing them in disinfectant. During preparation of feed, it's best practice to wear clean gloves to avoid contamination. Before the calf has received colostrum, it has no immunity and can pick up infections immediately from birth. To this end, it's very important that you keep calving conditions as clean as possible. Before calving begins, it's important that all equipment, such as calving aids or ropes, are clean, well-maintained and disinfected. Hands should be gloved or at least washed before assisting with calving. Adult cow manure presents a huge risk of bacteria to the newborn calf that has no immunity. Less than a teaspoon amount of manure, if ingested, will heavily contaminate the gut. Make sure your calving area has enough capacity for your calving pattern. Allowing time for cleaning and avoiding overstocking will reduce bacterial load in the lying area. In an ideal world, a cow should carve in an individual pen that is cleaned and disinfected after every birth. If this is impractical, the carving area should be cleaned out as regularly as possible and kept well bedded. The build-up of dirty bedding creates a reservoir of bacteria. Birth fluids in particular are the perfect environment for bacterial growth. The nose, mouth and navel are vulnerable points of entry for bacteria. Navel infections, joint ill and early scours can all be due to initial infection in the calving pen. Navels should be dipped as soon as possible after birth using a clean dip cup and a 7% iodine solution. This aids the drying and speeds up the rate of closure of this potential infection route. Ensure full coverage from the tip of the navel to the abdomen. It's recommended to dip again 12 to 18 hours later, as this can act as a further barrier to infection. The longer the navel is left undipped and exposed to pathogens, the higher the risk of early infection. You should monitor calf's navels for signs of swelling, hardness or wetness to make sure that any infections that do occur are caught and treated early. Calves with non-dipped navels have 11% higher mortality than those which had been dipped. A study at Cornell University found that calves with untreated navel infections are on average two and a half kilograms lighter at three months of age than calves without infections. 
navel dipping is a cheap and effective method of protecting the calf from early infection. The ear tagging procedure is another potential route of infection if you don't pay careful attention to hygiene. Make sure ear tags are stored in a clean place and disinfect them if necessary. Remove any dirt or debris from the ear and clean where the tag will be inserted. Iodine can be used as a disinfectant. Wearing clean gloves ensure the correct placement of the tag between the lines of cartilage to minimise bleeding. Monitor the calf post-tagging for signs of infection. Disbudding should take place when calves are less than two months old and still have immunity from their mother's colostrum. At this age, the horn tissue is in the early stages of development, meaning that the horn-producing cells are removed without opening the sinus cavity into the skull. Opening the sinus cavity, when dehorning at later dates, allows a route for infection. Never disbud at stressful times, such as weaning or movement. Stress reduces feed intake and the body's ability to fight infection. Alongside local anaesthetic at the site of disbudding, it's also a good idea to give calves a shot of non-steroidal anti-inflammatory painkiller. Using antibiotic spray after disbudding helps reduce the infection risk. All equipment used for disbudding or tagging should be cleaned between calves and only store equipment after it's been thoroughly cleansed and disinfected. Hygiene of feeding equipment is an important aspect of calf rearing. Using the correct temperature of water and chemicals, the rinse, scrub, soak, wash, rinse again and dry routine should be followed. More details of this can be found in the Dairy Co. Colostrum Hygiene film. Housing should provide a dry, clean, warm and comfortable environment to maximise calf growth. There are lots of different types of housing, but regardless of yours, correct hygiene procedure and management will maximise production. All-in, all-out systems allow for entire disinfection between rearing groups, which promotes a clean environment. Pressure washing whilst calves are still in their environment can cause bacteria and viruses to become airborne and increasing the infection rate. Manure and organic matter must be removed before chemical cleaning. You cannot disinfect manure. The first step is dry cleaning, removing bedding and manure first. This is followed by a wet clean, washing with detergent to remove further organic material. When cleaning calf housing, rough, porous surfaces are harder to disinfect than smooth surfaces. Allow housing to dry before applying disinfectant. Wet surfaces will dilute the disinfectant, making it less effective. Take care when mixing chemical detergents and disinfectants, as under dilution can increase costs and over dilution can make them ineffective. It's important to bed down and clean out regularly, as bacteria love a damp environment as well as it increasing the humidity. You can test how damp the bedding is by doing a kneel test. So you kneel down in the bedding, and when you get back up again, you see if your knees are damp to see what the bedding's like. Keeping washing facilities separate from housing will help maintain a drier environment. Automatic feeding machines will need a well-drained area for the cleaning cycle. Ventilation removes heat and humidity in the air, which aid bacteria and virus survival. A plentiful supply of fresh air removes dust and ammonia, which irritate the respiratory tract, causing permanent damage to the lungs through respiratory disease. To prevent spreading infectious disease to other calves, remove sick animals immediately from housing. The Dairy Co. Requirements for Housing Guide has all the specifications for correct housing for young stock. Good hygiene routines will reduce illness, promote growth rate and cut losses. Ensure that everyone working in the calf shed is wearing clean clothes and has disinfected their boots before entering. Also make sure that the calf pens have been cleaned and disinfected too. Immediate navel dipping will provide a barrier for infection. And remember proper cleaning and disinfecting protocols when disbudding and tagging calves. Whatever housing system you choose, it needs to be easy to clean and disinfect routinely, as well as providing a dry, well-ventilated environment to minimise disease and infection. 
you can find more information about caring for newborn calves on the Dairy Co. Calf Management Fact Sheets or through the Dairy Co. website.